Welcome back to Climate Matters. I'm Edie Lush, delighted to be here with Anuka Dada for our next session. We want to bring in one of the first experts to go deeper into the 10 steps that Anuka was speaking about. In that case, it's the step around accelerating the shift to zero emission vehicles. Transport is responsible for about 20% of the world's carbon emissions, maybe a bit more. So we can see that addressing that is absolutely crucial. Really pleased to have with us Polkit Srivastava. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Well. Co-founder of Evage. So tell us what Evage is and what its role in reducing carbon emission in transportation. Um, thank you um, for that question and pleasure to be here. Um, we are opposite of Giga. We are opposite of large. We are decentralized manufacturing. We are better for the environment. Manufacturing in auto since 19th century has just been about putting up large, huge factories, mm. making the same product and shipping all over the world. We have cracked the code, inverted the pyramid to make vehicles at one tenth of the cost space and manpower, tailor make vehicles to the region which is required. In. But the point is why we are doing this, not how we are doing it. Mm. 29 to 37% of pollution in a city is because of freight vehicles. Mm -hmm. And 2% of vehicles contribute to 50% of that pollution. And those are not passenger vehicles. Mm -hmm. There are buses or commercial vehicles. It's important that the world comes together to change the fact that the vehicles which run the longest should be decarbonized. And of course, while we are doing it, we have figured a way to manufacture in a more sustainable way mm. and therefore addressing the problem of the world because climate change is injustice. The countries which contribute the least pay the highest price mm. and G20 countries contribute to 75% of pollution. We need to take an action. That's Absolutely. What we're to do. So, I mean, road freight is about a third of emissions from transportation on its own, about 7% of global emissions. Anuka, how does what Evage is doing fit into your 10 points? It sounds like quite a few of them because there's manufacturing as well as transportation as well. What do you want to know from Pulkit? I think it's really exciting because Pulkit is essentially going after the electric vehicle cleaning up your transport part of the, of the bucket. So, how do you make people's lives better, cleaner, healthier, I think is the kind of bit I would say it fits into. And it might be worth actually, Pulkit, telling us a bit, if you don't mind, about kind of the costs that come with that, because this is always the problem that you come up against, which is, mm. I would love an electric car, or I would love an electric bus or a goods vehicle, but actually this is just too expensive for me. Right. Um, uh, there are two ways to look at it. One is, again, the product and how we manufacture. Circular manufacturing in India is half a trillion dollar uh, industry. Mm. So, uh, and globally it's four and a half trillion dollar industry. Uh, we need to reimagine the way we manufacture. Very, very important. Of course, we need to create low cost carriers. Therefore, the countries where pollution impacts the most and a hundred thousand dollar delivery van will be priced out. Uh, mm. We require an economical variant to be there. So what we are trying to do is of course reimagine the whole manufacturing process to then pass the benefit to our customer to create, um, and that's what you're doing in India. We are creating high-end technical engineering first time in India and bringing what, how planes were built, that know-how to manufacturing automobile. We, we hire a lot of space engineers and, mm -hmm. and a lot of aeronautics engineers and we make them uh, build automobiles with the same mindset and precise engineering the way you would build spacecraft. Why do you need a spacecraft engineer? I mean, I love the idea, <laughs> but why do you need a spacecraft engineer to build a truck? EVs are closer to a washing machine and a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. We are like mobile phone with wheels. <laughs> uh, uh, we're not that close to combustion engine. Mm. Um, and uh, it requires a different mindset, light weighting. For example, we use composite material mm. to manufacture the cockpit and the load body. We probably makes the world's largest single composite structure. Um, so just, what is a composite structure for folks who do, might not know what it um, is? Glass fiber and carbon fiber put right. together. We design it in a way that um, it's stronger than steel uh, and far lighter, hmm. very easy to repair. So imagine if servicing of your vehicle, instead of going to a workshop, we will come to you and we'll serve it as far quickly. Hmm. So we, we don't have a paint shop. We have a very small press shop and we don't have a welding line. We don't weld, we rivet, we bolt. 
it's not, it, this is not a know-how with automobiles earlier. This is how planes, so planes are riveted or bolted, right? They're not welded because when you weld it, the structure, the heat, because of heat, where the joint is, it becomes weaker. It's a different know-how. Um, that's why we hire more uh, aeronautics engineer than automobile engineer. Really interesting. So let's connect what you're doing and the idea of zero carbon vehicles to some of the other points in your 10 point plan, Anuka. Electric vehicles don't get you that far if your system for generating the electricity is carbon intensive, right? Yeah, completely. But there's kind of two parts to this problem, right? One is an individual I can try and solve by choosing these products, uh, such as such as pockets, which I think is really exciting. And then the other, as you say, is mm. well, where is the stuff that I just plug into it coming from? Right. Um, which, Wind, could it be hydrogen? Which is more clear. of a national kind right. of system problem. Mm. But we're also seeing quite a lot of progress. Okay, but I think also more broadly, and this is where our cops really matter, and mm. I'm not going to grade progress, but actually at, at all of them bringing together and accelerating renewable deployment, mm. I think is really important. And we've also seen the cost of that fall. And I think this is kind of quite an interesting marrying feature because you were telling us that actually that your vehicles are around a tenth of the cost of, of more conventional uh, builds. Yeah, the manufacturing is, is one, it takes one tenth to manufacture it. And because of that, we pass on the benefit to the customers. That's why there are, in, in the world, there are $100,000, $80,000 vans. It's far mm. cheaper. Anuka, to your point of, of renewable energy to charge the vehicle. Listen, India is going, has um, increased 50% of more solar power in the yeah. last four or five years. We put the maximum solar plants in, or solar panels in the last year in the world. Yeah. We are very progressive about renewable energy. I think it's the time where the government needs to take a notice and make a mandate that charging stations must be powered hmm. by solar. Uh, bold statement, but India has an opportunity to do it. I can't help but be the, 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 the kind of but. You also need to make sure you've got other things on your system as of well, course. right? Because, of course. Uh, and this is, how our, this is how we work. And if you were to ask me what's more important, actually, I'd say we have to do it all because right. that's the kind of key bit of it. So solar is really important, but also we need to store that energy. Mm. Um, and I think just an interesting point, I guess, from when we were developing our 10 point plan, actually over, I think it was a couple of years, our target went from 30 gigawatts of wind uh, by 2030 to 40 gigawatts to 50 gigawatts as we started to see prices fall, but mm. also kind of developers get more confident in the direction that we were going in. So kind of your wider investment climate signals, but actually also they were learning how to do this stuff and you learn by doing right and you build it and you do it again and the cost fall. So we've seen cost fall by like two thirds. I mean, one interesting associated issue is this idea of storing the power. And I know that you've worked on the battery cells pretty significantly, Polkett. So talk, talk us through the innovation there. I know there's issues around the materials, importing the materials to make the batteries. I know there's issues around the recycling and the cost of recycling. So tell me how you view this, because I know that you think about this idea of, of a circular economy very clearly. We, um, I, I'll tell you what we are doing, uh, and I hope everybody does it, because the idea is that uh, while there is enough focus on battery recycling, the point is that is only because the battery life is five years to six years. Mm -hmm. We have a battery life which will last a decade and, and far more cycles. And even after eight to ten years, 80% of the battery life will be left to be used for the next 25 years on stationary applications. Hmm packs which we make ourselves uh, will last 35 years. So you need to worry less about recycling. Use it for 8 to 10 years on vehicle and the residual value of electric vehicle is directly in proportional to the battery life left because battery is 50% cost of the vehicle. Therefore, you hit two birds with the same stone. Interesting. So I know that one, you know, if we, if we <coughs> come back to your, your points, the steps, one of the points is to get out of the vehicles, get onto our bikes. Now, it's not always possible to deliver everything by bike or leg. I know it's healthier for us, but how much does that actually reduce carbon, Hanuka? Um, it's more about kind of reducing the number of journeys and, and right. kind of overall. 
so I would come at that more from a kind of health perspective because mm -hmm. I think that's where the benefits really are. As you say, it's probably good for me. Right. So have a bit of a walk. Of, <laughs> but maybe after along Christmas. the promenade <laughs> here in Dubai. Yeah. Uh, after we've kind of stuffed our faces. Right. I think. But um, but actually, and you know, so it's a small part, right. but it makes a difference. Just like. Uh, you know, aviation, but aviation and shipping are kind of going to be growing areas, yeah. I think, over the next 30 years. Well, let's talk about that. The, the jet zero uh, and green ships decarbonizing air and sea transportation. They're a lot harder to electrify, right, Pulkit? Um, yes. And um, listen, I think hydrogen will first come in, in steel plants, coal plants and, and large <coughs> industrial applications. And after that, uh, probably planes and trains, locomotives and, and ships. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, um, it's a few years away. It has some physics problem, as we were discussing earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, give, it to, give us the physics problem in a nutshell. Um, simple 101. transporting hydrogen is very unstable at mm. this stage. Um, the objective is to produce it to, uh, at a very economical level. Mm -hmm. We are a few years away. So I know about mobility sector. Hydrogen is 15, 20 years away from a mm -hmm. city use case of a vehicle. Mm. So let's not confuse it. Hydrogen is amazing. It's the future. It, it is, far, see, it's total cost of ownership. Let's, let's <coughs> look at that, right? We all work up, we, we are not in the business of selling vans. Mm. We are in the business of selling business plans. Right. It needs to make <coughs> economical sense. Right. Don't worry about it. It needs to make economical sense. And at hydrogen, it does not make economical sense at this stage. Will it make in 15, 20 years? I hope so. Mm. Because essentially we all are trying to work towards solutions which leave the world in a better place than the way mm. we found it. Really interesting. Currently, the, uh, the solution is electrification. Okay. For the next 15 years. Anything to add there? <coughs> we can let you cough gently yeah. in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I just, I just another point while uh, you know, you, uh, uh, I feel better. Um, the trucking uh, sector is going to quadruple than what it is now. Uh, Why is that? Um, Listen, the consumer habits are changing, yeah. right? The number of trucks are going to just increase far more than what they are right now. 70% mm. uh, of GDP is going to come from cities. Um, and remember, 36 odd percent of pollution in a city uh, uh, is from uh, combustion engine vehicles. Yeah. So where you get the maximum amount of money in cities, that population from you know 30 odd percent to 70 percent will get access to unbreathable air. Yeah. We need to act now at city level to begin with. Let's focus. Let's not try and do a lot. Let's mm -hmm. solve the city problem. Okay. Now, a big <coughs> theme for us is moving faster towards net zero. Now, Anuka is not giving um, COP27 <laughs> a grade, but we do know we need to accelerate. What do you think the key steps are to a faster transition to carbon-free vehicles? Um, you know, the good, and, and we've discussed in this forum, the, the point is that um, we require government's help in two ways. Um, one is, of course, give incentives for people who <coughs> manufacture electric vehicles, and second, consumers who purchase it. At the same time, we need to levier heavier taxes on people who drive combustion engines. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, we are no longer at a stage where we say, um, we can reduce the one and a half degree centigrade. Uh, can we slow it down? No, we need to adapt, mm. right? And to adapt, um, we need to act both ways. Mm. Um, and, and that's important. I'm so glad that Indian government has a, a fame subsidy, which is faster adoption of manufacturing of electric vehicles. America is doing some amazing work. West Midlands in, in UK is doing some amazing work. And we are in conversations with many countries to now plot our factories globally and create modular micro factories, tailor make vehicles to make each city cleaner and make in that country brand. That's that's what how we are doing our own bid. And we treat our company like a pharma company, not like an automobile company. Every time I'm able to reduce a combustion engine mm -hmm. from the roads, we make someone's lung healthier. <laughs> that's, how, that's how seriousness we, we take our business with. It's really interesting, briefly, Anuka. The point is that government has to go hand in hand. We have to also be, as well as, as hooking people, pulling them in, we also have to be using the stick against those who insist on polluting. Yeah, I think the air quality point is actually a really, really important one that governments do care about. Mm. And I think that's the 
and people care about. So I think that's where their happiness is. Good. All right. I'm crying. <laughs> that's all right. We'll give you a moment yeah. to, to recover. Polkit, thank yeah. you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. Really interesting. Thank you. We will be back with our next guest in just a moment. So stay with us.